obviously the first one outside of Gibraltar. And um, you know, we, uh, we think these conferences are fantastic, and um, historically we've tried to present um, you know, a new initiative, how we see things moving forward. And today I want to talk to you about, really from shifting from uh, historically the, I think the startup fintech ICO model, as we see things evolving through into tokenized security. So the next 15, 20 minutes will be very much focusing on tokenized securities. I'll take a couple of minutes just to refresh you on, on who we are, what we've done so far, this works. So we've got the, uh, the group, the GSX group, um, and obviously the, uh, Heard from the Chief Minister earlier and the, and the Minister for Commerce, Albert Isla. We're always trying to carve ourselves out, maintain a leadership uh, position in terms of global relevance as a jurisdiction. And for us as a group, you know, with the, uh, the, the GSX group, we very much want to be part of that um, progression. We want to be, you know, hopefully, a thought leader in terms of um, digital assets and also trying to be very, uh, in terms of the fintech ecosystem, you know, a, a market leader. Uh, in terms of our group, um, we have on the bottom left GBX, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, I think we're the only stock exchange that owns and manages the cryptocurrency exchange uh, as of today. Uh, we have GBX, which focuses on token sales and cryptocurrencies. I'll give a little bit of colour on that in, in a moment. We have uh, the largest fund administration business in gym, and we're in the corporate services business. <coughs> um, we're seeing a growing demand for funds to find a jurisdiction that's friendly. And by friendly, I mean get a bank account. Um, the service providers have the expertise required to bring you to market, particularly on the crypto side. And uh, we saw that very much as a strong fit for our group to be able to provide those services to, to companies looking to domicile and establish in gym, but also fund managers looking for us to take care of them, particularly on the crypto side. Um, we are subject to regulatory approval. We're looking to acquire in the middle uh, a UK licensed broker dealer, uh, Forex and derivatives, we see that as a vital part as we move forward of expanding our ecosystem. And on the right hand side we have the, uh, the stock exchange, we have two markets, we have the main market, uh, EU regulated market, we're still in the EU, I think for a, a little while, a couple of weeks or months, and the FTF we have is called the global market, uh, which appeals more to international issuers. The main market, the way the market works is you can passport, so you get your prospectus approved by our regulator, that means you can passport across the 27 nations. As I said, uncertain as to how that's going to progress, but let's just assume we have a, a hard Brexit moving forward, passporting becomes a challenge. So just take a closer look at uh, GBX. GBX, we have a primary and a secondary platform. Uh, some of you may know this, and many of you in the room are um, part of our organization already as sponsor firms, which I'll touch on. But just very briefly, what we do with GBX is we have a grid token launch platform where we try to bring our expertise in capital markets, running an exchange, and bring those standards of best practices, governance, disclosure, investor protection, um, to, uh, to the launch pad in terms of utility tokens. This is all about ICOs uh, in terms of GBX. And then we have the secondary exchange called the DAX, um, and uh, that's for, uh, for tokens to trade. And again, we have a very strong regulatory environment in Gibraltar. We receive our licensing principle um, a month and a half ago. We're hopefully close to satisfying those conditions. Um, why are regulations important? Because you get certainty and it inspires consumer confidence. And you know, it's, a, it's a very reassuring thing that you, know, you have a regulator that uh, not only um, is, uh, is providing that regime, but also knows what they're doing. And our regulator is incredibly um, strong in terms of knowledge, in terms of what we do for a living. And, uh, and that should reassure anybody. We talk about adoption, institutional buy-in, these things are vital if this economy and ecosystem is going to grow in the next, uh, as I see it, 10 years. So the grid, um, if you look at the risks of doing a token sale, I'm sure some of you in the room have, have either completed or in the process or looking at a token sale, or some of you may be advisors or involved in that business. We've always thought that the, the risks um, of getting a token sale away are material, um, you know, if you're an issuer, and you're looking to issue a token, are you eligible to issue the token? Are you allowed to sell it to these buyers in these countries? You've then got to do the KYC and AML on your token buyers. If you have 10,000 people looking to register your token, you've then got to program your smart contract, you've got to collect the ether, you've got to distribute, you've 
you've got to do the right listing, and it goes on, and you're fraught with risk. I think from an, let's just call them an investor. The investor side of the business, you know, do you know that the issuers are fit and proper? Uh, is, the, is the product likely to work? Is there reasonable viability? So we, we saw that there's a huge amount of risk there. So we, we implemented a series of rules, and we have sponsor rules. So it's a bit like, uh, if you look, think about AIM, you have nomads. We have a sponsor model. Uh, so our sponsors are charged with bringing issuers to, to market. They are experts in their field. They have to meet the criteria of our sponsor rules, and uh, that's a vital part of you know, our process. Um, the sponsor rules are responsible for basically getting the application ready to bring to us, and then we do our deep dive review, and then the launch can happen. At the end of the public sale, you can then go on to the secondary exchange. We have 24 sponsor firms, we've got a six at the moment in application, um, and they are from a um, Adelaide, and Mike is in the room somewhere, from Calgary, there's Mike over there, from Canada, to uh, Hong Kong, to Singapore, to uh, Europe, and uh, Germany, UK. And that, uh, that team is growing, and that's a vital part as well for issuers. Issuers are not just about appointing a sponsor, the sponsors are a network that can help you with your deal to try to introduce you to buyers in different geographies. So it's, it's vital that uh, network is as global as can be. Um, in terms of the DAX, the secondary exchange, I think the most important thing is that we are hopefully close to being fully licensed. We are licensed in principle. We're a fiat uh, exchange. That's going to be more important as we move forward. Uh, if you've been watching the markets, uh, the stable coins haven't necessarily been very stable in the last couple of weeks. It's a lot to do with confidence and trust and perhaps uh, you know, government or top institutional buy-in. And uh, I think as a, as a fiat exchange, we currently have dollars, we're rolling out sterling and euros uh, in the next week, week and a half. And we'll continue to roll out other currencies as we move forward. Uh, in terms of the regulations, we've had to demonstrate very clearly to our regulator that we are we meet the nine principles. Uh, one of those is obviously client assets being secure. Uh, most of our assets are in cold storage, and uh, we believe that's the best way to protect assets securely with a multi-sig, multi-geographical, uh, multi-layer process in terms of releasing those assets. So if you look forward, and I'll talk about now we've gone to tokenized securities. Um, so GDX, we've now got to really start to build that business in terms of bringing in more users, uh, institutions that comes with being licensed, um, and, uh, and grow that business. But really now, we've got to look forward to the main exchange, the Toronto Stock Exchange, and as we see now, the natural evolution of, uh, of tokenized securities. We did our own issue, uh, the Rock Token, earlier this year. We laid out our white paper last November, December, uh, in the white paper, we very clearly talked about a roadmap. Their roadmap one was getting GBX, the grid, and the DAX open and licensed and regulated. Roadmap two is moving on to the main exchange in terms of tokenized securities. We very much saw this fundamentally as part of our future. I'll just take a little look at tokenized securities. You know, when you look at the traditional um, definition of securities, which is my background from investment banking as a, uh, a trader. Um, securities are, is all about contractual ownership, where if you look at tokenization, uh, it's about encrypting information and converting rights into a digital token. So you combine those two together and you think about tokenized security as effectively programmable ownership. And that's one of the biggest challenges that I think we're all facing as we try to look at how do we uh, build this business now in terms of um, tokenized securities. Excuse me. As you know, there's a um, growing list of definitions. Um, and I think if you look at the bottom four, they're all regulated. I think if the SEC have their way, the first one's gonna be regulated probably pretty soon as well. And um, if you look at what Gibraltar is doing, they're, they're implementing token sale regulations um, in the next uh, couple of weeks. But the regulators are, are effectively catching up with the ICO model. But in terms of everything else, anything that touches Ownership touches the balance sheet, touches revenue, touches PL, uh, has any voting, you're talking about securities. When you talk about securities, you're talking about securities legislation. And uh, so we see this as particularly the STO model, um, but also the, the uh, tokenization of existing tokens, existing securities, is being really the, uh, the growth, fantastic growth over the next, uh, next couple of years. 
So when you think about those benefits, um, you know, not a lot has changed in my three and a half decades of trading securities. It's still T plus three, and it's Monday to Friday. Um, we see that changing dramatically, and it's happening right now. Um, and I think you know, that what the crypto exchanges have demonstrated is that you, know, you can build something on a 24-7 basis that works. And uh, I think the security exchanges are now you know, starting to, to, look at, to look at this. Um, you know, when you go through the benefits, if you think about you know, a global pool of investors buying and selling securities as opposed to a localized exchange, which is the traditional model, then you know, you're going to have an increase in liquidity. If you look at um, today's challenge, if you look at SMEs, SMEs just want access to money. They want to build their business. They want to buy the factory next door. It's incredibly hard to get capital, and it's incredibly expensive. It takes a long time, and it's you know, sometimes 10% of the capital is the cost that you actually have to end up paying. We think that those costs can be slashed. The costs of maintaining your um, listing on an exchange can reduce dramatically due to the efficiencies. You're cutting out a lot of middlemen. We think the fractionalized ownership is just a really, really exciting development. And in terms of security, you're effectively moving from being very much relying on centralized um, depositories, clearing houses, and entities into a much more globalized, decentralized um, model. It's easy to track. You know, we were talking yesterday, and one of the speakers was talking about um, you know tracking the assets, and whether it's crypto, whether it's securities. Um, if you've got a immutable, transparent ledger that regulators can hook into, or an API, you know, you, ha you have a fantastic way to uh, to actually improve the transparency and make the, just the whole reporting process much more efficient than we currently have. So we think that those, uh, those opportunities in terms of tokenized securities, when you look at actually the benefits, and by the way, this presentation is available to any of you, um, but those benefits of tokenization of securities, we just think are, are, are too compelling to ignore um, anymore. So I'm going to talk to you now about um, our take and our approach to this, uh, which we've started now to talk about uh, over the last couple of weeks. Um, and that's uh, the Global Securities Protocol. So when we were originally looking back at our white paper and we were looking at how do we uh, provide this service for securities, securitized token offerings on the Gibraltar Stock Exchange, we were thinking about our own private commission blockchain. We would sit on top of that as an exchange. You come to us, you list your security token, and then you trade within GSX. If you don't have an account at GSX, you can't trade it. Um, and that seemed restrictive, didn't seem particularly appealing to issuers. Um, look, we know our place in the world as a stock exchange. You know, we're, we're very small. We're probably going to likely remain small. I would love to buy the London Stock Exchange. It's probably not going to happen anytime soon. So what we have to do is to think uh, more laterally, to think actually, if you look at traditionally exchanges like ours, um, at the moment we're in the fixed income, we're in the funds business. When we were looking at going into equities, not tokenized securities, traditional equities about a year and a half ago, we were looking at the solutions. And the solutions available to us were available to most exchanges like ours. Uh, you know, I called five minutes, I called the Deutsche Bulls, um, asked them how much it is to license their Zetra software. It's going to take two years and quite a lot of money. And then I'll still be probably a very small player. So our take on this was to um, actually provide a protocol which was global and available to all exchanges designed specifically for tokenized securities to enforce the best standards accepted by regulators and also is open, it's transparent, transactions are on the public ledger, and also developers can build apps on top of it. I've got five minutes, so I'm gonna to have to crack on. But in terms of the functionalities of the Global Securities Protocol, this is being built by a subsidiary, a tech subsidiary of our group, but you'll be able to list, clear, settle, have regulatory reporting, AML, KYC uh, facilities, have full transparency, full disclosure, external APIs, etc. So we think that uh, at the moment, our testing is running at about 15,000 transactions per second. So we think it's fit for purpose. Um, if you look at traditional securities, I've listed out some of the existing challenges historically, but if you also look at security tokens, existing, uh, the, the technology that we've looked at out there, we've got some challenges there. It's public edge of technology, uh, institutions aren't necessarily confident about that, and I think you see that the uh, the significant 
repeating theme is there's no global market network for either, and that's what we think is the, is the missing link. So for stock exchanges, partner exchanges, we think broker dealers, investment banks, financial institutions, regulated entities can effectively come on and um, join our protocol. They take a note, there's no fee, we're building it. You can take it, you can test it, and we've already started talking to actually smaller stock exchanges, we're actually already speaking to bigger stock exchanges who are, I think, extremely open and interested to a protocol that works and has been built specifically for tokenized securities. So in terms of benefits for all, well, we think the, the benefits are, are pretty obvious, but you start to provide a much faster route to market for issuers with standardized regulations and listing. Uh, we think regulators can then start to enforce uh, consistent regulations in terms of um, hard blockchain rules. Um, clients, think about an issuer. So you come to our exchange. We have 30, 40 exchanges using the protocol, subject to regulatory uh, uh, restrictions. That issuer can have access to that global pool of buyers that have accounts at other stock exchanges. We think that's really exciting in terms of uh, providing that liquidity. Most importantly, fintech providers, those developers right now, those app guys, they can bring the apps in terms of custody, lending, risk, order entry, order management, digital registrars, stick the apps on the protocol, make them available to all the verified partners. I think the issue of benefits, I've touched on it, but basically you get access to a pool of investors, your cost of capital uh, will, will reduce, and um, we don't want to be the global police, but this is effectively a clearing settlements process, so you will go to the stock exchange that you have to go to or want to go to, but you potentially get access to that global pool. So I think from our perspective, um, you know, this is the first time we've publicly really talked about the Global Security Protocol. It's the next stage of evolution for us. I think in terms of you know, pivot points we talk about, um, we look at capital markets. I think we're, we're right now at the point where capital markets can be truly disrupted. Um, you know, I would say having overseen in investment banking 43 stock exchange seats, there's a reason why not a lot's changed for a very long time, because we all made a lot of money. And actually, I think what issuers should be able to get access to is a much faster and lower cost of capital and access to investors. So I think what investors should be able to get access to is being able to buy Apple on a Sunday morning on their phone, watching the football on their sofa, and not waiting for the exchange to open on a Monday. So this is a collaborative approach. It's all about global partnerships. We think in the end, that's the really the only way forward. To, uh, to build this ecosystem. So, I appreciate you listening and thank you very much. And we've got a stand upstairs, so any questions, please come and find us after, so we'd love to talk to you about it. Thank you.